Good morning, folks. Big shout out to Kamloops Thompson Rivers University for the great event last night and to everyone who came to the lecture. Well, I suppose there's only one place to start. Big Mama Filament lifted, destabilized, and released in spectacular fashion yesterday, creating a solar tsunami in the process. NASA's Enlil spiral predicts impact from the CME and shows a fair bit actually south of the equatorial plane. NOAA's Enlil shows more going north of Earth, but nevertheless still predicts an interplanetary shockwave impact on our planet September 6th. Funny thing though, at first glance, does it not look like this rope of plasma is releasing 100% upward, set to miss the planet north? The Lasco coronagraphs on SOHO seem to confirm up and away and a miss. Can't imagine what NASA's animal spiral is looking at, but I suppose we've got about three days to wait and see if impact occurs. That second eruption you see coming from the bottom left of the sun is yet another burst from the sunspots turning in on the south. All of these eruptions we've got are perturbing the inner heliosphere like Dr. Uyen and I have discussed on Fly on the Wall. Proton bombardment still surging a bit below official radiation storm levels at the dotted line. The long duration event is accompanied by low energy electrons as well. The solar wind is fairly steady, a bit of variation and a touch above the normal baseline. It's what's keeping the KP index off the floor at the moment. Solar flaring is still weak on the Earth-facing disk and the current sunspots are lacking the form to fire. Big group down south and the central is beta but spread, no real magnetic mixing. Now I emphasize the word current sunspots because the big boys are turning in. These are the ones responsible for those backside eruptions we saw yesterday. Eyes open there. Ahead of those, another plasma filament to monitor snaking in towards center disk here. And just out ahead of that is our southern coronal hole, moderately geo-effective. We saw a high five rumble in Tonga that hit six on multiple meters. I do not like seeing Pacific rise quakes as it can foretell larger ones for South America. The shaking continues in Iceland as well and will cap off with a five pointer in New Zealand. Two radiation stories on RSOE. First is the high radiation level of wild boars in Germany, claimed to be old Chernobyl effects. Also, a cesium canister has gone up and missing in Kazakhstan. I'll also note the flooding nearing catastrophic levels statewide in Thailand. Top article today. Do you know what this is? It's a view of the Napa Valley quake zone in radar vision. Interesting article and graphics about the most recent major California earthquake. On the left, we've got Dolly, on land, weakening, might not make it to the Pacific. Meanwhile, Norbert has been named just to the west and is heading on a northwest track that may cause concern for southern Baja. The only two points of tropical development on Earth are sitting right next to one another. Let's shift a bit north and find the same low from yesterday in the Hudson now boxed out by a second low just to its west. While it may look disorganized, it has stolen the convergence zone the last 12 hours, drawing heat and moisture up the central United States, and nobody should be surprised to see these watch zones in the northern states and up across the border into Canada. Brought the pressure overlay up for Europe so you can see the high pressure blocking one area in white with the solid low to the south in purple in the eastern Mediterranean. That's why we've got severe alerts from Istanbul to the west. Four vapor flows of note down under. You can see these with the cursor as I move left to right. This is where we find our precipitation zones this evening. One, two, three, and four. We've got the remaining global storm watches and some shots of our star to close. It's 6, 10 a.m. Eastern time, 3, 10 a.m. in British Columbia. That's the news, eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.